Shalom, first and foremost, on the star by giving our praise, our honor, our glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakak Badash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hope for the Le'akim out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations. That may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line and your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American. One of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, inshallah. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again to through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And this lesson, I want to go into the uh, the desolation. You see, what are we what are we talking about when we say the desolation? We're talking about the desolation of the land known as America, which is actually Babylon the Great in the Bible. You see, the chief dwelling place of the Edomites, the so-called white race. You see, this is what the Most High has laid out to come to pass according to prophecy, according to His will, and that's what's being done. And we see the stage being set. You see, by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah for these things to come to pass because we we see what's taking place over there in the so called Middle East between the state of Israel and Iran. And, and that's going to lead the world into World War III. And in the midst of World War III, America and that land of Israel, you see, is going to be burned up by way of fire. The only difference is. The only difference is uh, America would never be inhabited again. But that land that the Most High promised unto our forefathers, the, uh, our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that spans from the Nile River to the Euphrates, that land is going to be rebuilt up by you heathen nations in our kingdom. You see. So let's go. Let's get these two verses real quick. This is Jeremiah forty nine and seventeen. It says, "Also Edom shall be a desolation." Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. You see that? That's what's coming to the Edomites. That's that's the that's the punishment for what they've done unto the Israelites here in this land. It's gonna become a desolation. I have the word for desolation right here. What the fuck was that? So I have the word for desolation right here. It says devoid of inhabitants and visitors deserted you see that and that's exactly what america is going to become look at that barren lifeless you see that and, and the only land that's prophesied to suffer this is the land of america because we know and understand that the israelites according to prophecy according to what the most High has promised he's going to take his people back into their land and they're going to dwell safely so that's how we know that the land of israel is going to be rebuilt up by the hands and on the backs of you heathen. America, not so much. It's going to become a complete desolation, barren and lifeless, lifeless, and no one will ever dwell in this land ever again. That's the punishment that's coming upon this place. In the form of what? In the form of nuclear fire. In the midst of World War III. As it goes on the say, verse 18 says what? As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, in the neighbor cities thereof, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. There it is. That's the definition of desolate. desolate. You see that? Devoid of inhabitants and visitors. Deserted. That's what America is going to become. Now you might say, well, that's talking about ancient Babylon or what have you. No, nah, man. Ancient Babylon wasn't taken out this way. Ancient Babylon didn't go out the way Sodom and Gomorrah went out. If it did, it would have been recorded, would it not? It's not Sodom and Gomorrah recorded in history. And how it went out? Of course it is. So if ancient Babylon would have went out this way, it would have been recorded in human history. For us to look back to, you see, to, to read up on, but that never happened. See, the place that's going to suffer the same fate as Sodom and Gomorrah is talking about America, man. Why? For all the wickedness that goes on here. And chiefly for what's been done unto us Israelites here in this land. That's why this great destruction is coming upon this place the way it is for it to never be inhabited again. A complete desolation. That's what World War III is going to lead to. 
nuclear missiles being fired off, and America suffering the, suffering the same fate as Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Complete destruction by way of nuclear fire. And it's going to be harsh and it's going to be devastating, man. Let's get... Because like we said, you have the state of Israel over there uh, poking and prodding in Iran. And that's that that's causing uh, uh that's causing a vacuum effect. It's causing the nations to be sucked into World War Three. Even uh even America's uh, top military brass is telling you that the state of Israel is dragging America into World War Three, and it's all by design, man. It's all according to prophecy. That's what has to happen, because it goes on to say. Right here. Jeremiah 50 and 45, it says, Therefore hear ye the counsel of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, that he have taken against Babylon. This is not talking about ancient Babylon. This is talking about what? The spirit, uh, the daughter of Babylon. You see? Which is ran by the Edomite, the so-called white race. Now listen to what the Mosai says. It says what? And his purposes. That he have purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. You see that? Who's the least of the flock? The 1948ers, man. The people who were proclaiming to be the, so to be the Jews. This is what you're watnessing, watching, uh, witnessing when you're watching the news, man. When you're seeing those different events going on in the Middle East with Iran. I mean, uh, Israel poking the pride in Iran. Do, uh, basically uh, disregarding all the international laws of war. You see, all that's causing a fucking vacuum effect for all the nations to be sucked into this war. And the one who's going to see the brunt of the destruction is America, man. It goes on to say, it says what? Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. You see that? It says what? Verse 46. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. And the, and the cry is heard among the nations. You see that? Why is the earth going to be moved? Because that 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 destructive power that's going to be raining down upon this place in the form of those 200 million thermonuclear warheads, man. Let's show you that real quick. Let's get Revelation 9. And we'll start at 15. It says what? And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, in a day, in a month, in a year, for to slay the third part of men. Those angels are the angels that are over there in the so-called Middle East, working on the mind, the uh, the minds of the kings of the earth. You see, because it's telling you. Matter of fact, we got to go back two chapters. This is uh Revelation seven and one. It says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing in, on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And that goes into the angels. So like that goes into the angels holding back that nuclear destruction. Now, why are they holding it back? Verse two lets you know. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels and, and to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. There it is. You see that? That nuclear destruction is being held back into all the elected seal. You see, and when the elected seal, that's this, this is how we get to this point right here in Revelation 9. You see that? Those four angels are going to be loosed when all the elect of Israel is sealed. When they finally, when all the, the remnant of the nation of Israel receive that, uh, that the war that you read about in Ezekiel chapter 9, that's when that destruction is going to come. You see, all this tension being stirred up with the, the shit that Israel, the state of Israel is doing. Those are the angels over there working on the minds of the leaders of the state of Israel to do what? To bring prophecy to pass according to the Most High's will. And it's going to lead to what? Verse 9, I mean, uh, Revelation 9 and uh, 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day 
in a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And only the most I know is the time of the hour. You see that? When the most I gives that green light, it's on. Verse 16 says what? And the number of the army of horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. This is not talking about actual horsemen. This is talking about what? Those nuclear missiles that are waiting to be shot off in those silos, man. He said he heard the number of them. There were 200,000 thousand. What is that? 200 million warheads are going to be fired to completely and utterly destroy America and, and make it a desolation. As a punishment for what? The third part of men, which are the wicked. The so-called white race here in the land of America. Because there are three classifications of men on the earth. You have the sons of God, which are us Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You have the sons of men, which are the heathen nations. And you have the sons of the wicked, which are the so-called white race, the Edomites. You see the damn demon spawn. <laughs> you see? A fucking demon spawn, man. And this is their judgment. This is what they've been reserved for. All this rape, robbery, murder, all these atrocities committed against our people. The Most High hasn't forgotten it. He just, he, now, and, and now we know that because we come into the what? We've come into the tabernacle of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to understand their end. To understand this truth. You see, Esau never got away with all the shit he's done unto us. All that's being recorded in the heavens. They've just been reserved here for this final time of judgment. To be made an example of and for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah's name to be uplifted and exalted in the earth. They, they've been saved for this day. You see that? Now verse 17 goes on to say, matter of fact, it tells you that in Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, well, for Yahweh have made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil this is this is the only reason the wicked has been set up and exalted the way they, they they've been man so the most i can take them down without any effort and make his name known in the earth because that's what's going to be done this is what they've been reserved for man this is their punishment finally coming upon them you see that that's what's happening oh man matter of fact Let's get Isaiah 34, because it goes on to tell you what. Isaiah 34 and 5, it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. And that goes into what? The, the ICBM missiles. And if you know how they operate, they're, they're shot out of the silos into the upper atmosphere, traveling to their destination. You see, re-entering the atmosphere and, uh, and, and releasing that payload. That's how they're bathed in heaven. And it says what? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. These Edomites have been cursed. Yeah, they're living in their blessing right now, but they are cursed people. Because this is the only reason they've been created. This is the only reason the Most High has allowed these people to stay around for so long. He's reserved them to be made an example of. He's reserved them to receive this nuclear destruction as a punishment. Just go back and look at their bloody history, man. This is the most I finally repaying them back for all the things that he uh that they've done unto his beloved people. You see? Let's show you this right here in uh translation comparison, right? Let's see what the NLT says. Isaiah 34, Isaiah 34 and 5 in the NLT it says what? And when my sword has finished its work in the heavens, it will fall upon Edom, the nation I have marked for destruction. Whoo! You see that? Look at that. What else can we get? What, what does the NIV say? Isaiah 34 and 5 in the NIV it says, My sword has drunk its fill in the heavens. See. It descends in judgment upon Edom, the people I have totally destroyed. This hasn't happened yet. You see? This is what's coming. The CSB. 
Isaiah 34 and 5 in the CSB, when my sword has drunk its fill in the heavens, it will then come down on Edom and on the people I have set apart for destruction. And that's what Esau has been made or uh, created for, man. You see, for his chief dwelling place, America, and the inhabitants of it to be a part of what? That desolation. To be made a, des to be made a desolate wilderness, man. That's what's coming. You see? But I'm going to come back to this. Matter of fact, yeah, let's finish this uh, Revelation 9 real quick. So it says what? Revelation 9 and 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of Jason, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses, whereas the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. This is this is the this is the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos describing. You see, nuclear missiles being launched. You see, go watch nuclear missiles being launched. What, he, what he's describing, he's seeing them being launched out of the silos. That's what I said, what? They had on breastplates of fire. When you see a missile shot out of the silo, that the, the power from the fucking, uh, the jet propulsion, propulsion system shoots out of the bottom bottom of the silo, engulfing the fucking, <laughs> engulfing the missile in flame and fire. That's why I said, having breastplates of fire. And of Jason, if you go look at what the color Jason is, that's the color of fire. Says what in the heads of the horses, whereas the heads of lion, because what they're ferocious, they're fierce. You see, like, like you won't, you won't want to look at a fucking, or take a look at a lion head on if you were out there in the wilderness with one. It's the same thing with these missiles, man. They're ferocious, they're fierce. You see, it says what out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. What's the word? The head of the missile. Out of the head of the missile, uh, issued fire, smoke, and brimstone in the form of what? Those nuclear warheads. You see that? 18 says what? By these three was the third part of men killed. That's the, because this is what Esau has been set apart for. To receive this, this fiery judgment here in the land of America. And two thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're going to partake in it as well. Because what? You refuse to do what the Lord tells you to do. You refuse to repent and believe upon the Lord Yahweh Shah. So guess what? You're going to be left here to be destroyed. While the one third of the nation of Israel is going to be beamed up out of that destruction. You see? Revelation 9 and 18 says, well, by these three was the third part of men killed. By the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Which once again goes into the nuclear warheads. Verse 19 says what? And their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And, and that goes into what? The fire that burneth behind them, leaving that smoke trail in, 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 uh, in his wake that goes into the rocket propulsion system. And had heads, and with them they do hurt. What is, what is it talking about? The warheads. They do hurt because that's why all the destructive power is in the front of that missile. When it gets to its destination, it opens up and drops its payload. And, and, and these missiles can have multiple warheads in them. You see? That, this is what's coming to this land to make it a desolation. To never be inhabited again. This is the punishment of America, you see? And this place is going to suffer the same fate as Sodom and Gomorrah before it. Now let's go to Isaiah 34. Hey, come on, I know I just had that jump. There we go. Isaiah 34 and 5, it says what? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which are the Edomites, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. This is what Esau has been set apart for. You see? It tells you that in Romans 9, that the most I had suffered with. Uh, matter of fact, let's get it real quick. Because once again, we, we got we to gotta continue to go into this, because at the end of the day, uh, yep. 
this is what it is because you got to understand man every every nation has been put into a position on the earth with the with the Israelites being the head nation and the Edomites being the basest nation, the weakest nation, the, the worst nation. And because of that, the Most High set them apart to receive of this uh, great destruction that he has set to befall the earth. You see? Why? Romans 9 and 22 explains why. It says what? What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? You see that? This is the only reason Esau has been allowed to do what he's done or become what he's become. The most I gave him a blessing. He allowed he allowed Esau to come into the fullness of it. Just so these just so this nation can be built up in great pride, thinking to the point to where they think they could fight against God, for the most high to come and upset them with no effort to make his power known in the earth. This is what Esau has been ordained to be. The vessels of wrath. Fitted to destruction. Let's see what it says in the NLT. Romans 9 and 22 it says. In the NLT it says. Uh, in the same way. Even though the Most High has the right to show his anger. And his power. He is very patient with those on whom his anger falls. Who are destined for destruction. Do we not read that this is what Esau was set apart for? Just like the Israelites were set apart to be the leaders in righteousness. Esau was set apart to be what? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, to fulfill the Most High's will and for him to make his power known. You see? And no one has any say so in the matter, man. This is what the Most High has ordained from the beginning. And there is nothing that Esau can do, even though he's trying as hard as he can. There's nothing that he can do to upset prophecy, man. It's going to happen just like the Most High said it's going to happen. And we see all the signs pointing to what? Hey, this place is about to be fucking destroyed. Because we see what the state of Israel is doing and causing that vacuum effect over there in the Middle East, drawing all the nations into World War III. Especially America. And it has to be this way. You see? Now, we go back to Isaiah 34 and verse 5. It says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. He have with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah have a sacrifice in Basra in a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Oh, let's see what we got. what we got here. Let's see what this translation say. NLT. Isaiah 34 and 6 in the NLT, it says, The sword of Yahweh is drenched with blood and covered with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, which represent, which represent you people because you're what? You're the sacrifices for the, uh, you're, you're the, yeah, you're the sacrifices for the slaughter. The most I was about to, hey, like the Apostle Hall said, man, the America's a, a gigantic altar, and you people are the sacrifices. You see? <laughs> And the Most High is going to what? <laughs> Offer you up as a burnt offering by way of that nuclear fire, man. It says what? With the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of rams prepared for sacrifice. Yes, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah will offer a sacrifice in the city of Basra. And that just represents the, uh, that's a, a chief place in Esau's inheritance, Mount Seir. But now that that's representative of what? America, the chief dwelling place of Esau. You see the the land that he's so proud, he's so proud in. He's so proud of, let me say it like that. It says what? He will make a mighty slaughter in Edom, which is what America, man. And you people are going to be slaughtered utterly by way of that nuclear fire, you know? Now it goes in the say verse 7. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. And why? Verse 8 lets you know. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. So all this is being brought upon this place, and the inhabitants of it is because what? What you've done unto the Israelites here. 
You see it mainly what you've done to the uh, the elect of Israel here in this land. Yeah, the Most High is going to pay you back for all you've done unto his entire nation, but but it first and foremost begins what you've done to the to his men, to the true believers. The Most High is about to pour his vengeance upon this place, man. So this says in the NLT. Isaiah 34 and 8 in the NLT, it says, For it is the day of Yahweh's revenge. Look at that. It is the, for it is the day of Yahweh's revenge. Why, 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 why does the Most High need revenge? Once again, it's because of what you've done unto his people. And what you're still doing unto what so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is the Most High's revenge coming upon you as he promised he would bring. It says what? The year when Edom will be paid back for all it did to Israel. You see that? Like we say all the time, and these devils did not get away. The Most High has not forgotten what they've done unto us, man. And they're going to be repaid. And it begins with their precious America being completely engulfed in nuclear fire, becoming a desolation as the Most High promises to make it. You see? Now verse 9 says what? And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. You see that? Everything in this place is going to be completely dissolved, as the Apostle Peter tells you. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. That means everything that you see around you, everything that you pass by on a daily basis. You see, everything that you guys are accustomed to seeing as if it was normal is going to be erased, as if it never was, man. And that's some great destructive power. And that's why I tell you that the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. You see? And we know that's going to have some uh, chain reactions, tsunamis, earthquakes, all manner of things, man. So it goes on to say, verse 10, And it shall not be quenched day nor night. The smoke thereof shall go forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. You see that? It's a constant thing when it comes to when, when the Most High is talking about this destruction. The Most High is constantly reiterating and letting you know that America will never be inhabited ever again once it's destroyed. No one will live in this land ever again. This land is going to be what designated for uh, every young every unclean and hateful bird and all the and all the what unclean animals man <laughs> you see as it goes on to further explain as you read down into the chapter but this is what's coming a complete desolation america is going to be made made into you see let's get Yep. And this is going to happen, man. And, it, it, and and like we always say, and like the scriptures let you know, just because you don't believe doesn't stop it. I mean, it doesn't make it not true. Or it doesn't stop it from coming to pass, you see? You can live in that state of delusion all you want to, but guess what? It's going to rain fire and brimstone from the heavens one day, man. And all the, only the most I know is that time and hour, but we know and understand that it is coming. So this is uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all sh shall come to repentance. You see that? The Most High does doesn't want to destroy his people, but if they don't repent, he's left with no other option. You see that? Because he's going to bring this thing to pass, man. Because like Yahweh Shah tell, tells us, and like the most I always reiterate through the mouth of the prophets, all throughout the script, all throughout these scriptures, it tells us what? Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And how do we get there? Through much tribulation. So all this must come to pass, including the destruction of America. You see that? It's all got to happen. But it goes on to say, a new heaven and a new earth. Verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Because, 
And it's going to be for those who are not watching. But for us, we're watching, man. We're looking for these things to come to pass. We're constantly praying about these things coming to pass. We're constantly going into the scriptures, you see, over and over and over again, keeping it fresh in our minds. Because what? These things are going to come to pass. And we know that the Most High is not stacking. It's going to catch all the unbelievers out, uh, off guard. It's going to catch a lot of Israelites who know they're Israelites off guard because they haven't truly been watching for the Lord to return. They really truly, they truly haven't been hoping for Yahweh shall to return to establish righteousness on the earth. This is why they're moving the way they're moving, preaching what they're preaching, man. You see? But they're going to get caught out there with, that, with their ass out, just like during the time of Noah, man. Well, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 goes on to say what? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You see that? How is that going to be done? By where that nuclear fire, man. The earth also, and the works therein, shall be burned up. And that's not talking about the entire earth being destroyed, as the pagan Christian church wants you to believe. No. America is going to be completely engulfed in fire. You see? And everything in it is going to be dissolved away as if it never was. You see that? Because like the scriptures tell you, the most I made the earth to be inhabited. And this is what we're going to rule on. It says what? You have made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, letting us know the earth is not going to be destroyed. You see? <clears throat> Verse 11 goes on to say what? Seeing then that all these things are Seeing then that all these things shall come to shall be dissolved, what manner of persons like you to be on all holy conversation and godliness, man? You know what our manner of life, how we're conducting ourselves. We're supposed to be in the spirit of what? Seeking after the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Continue to pray, fast, study, go out there on the highways and byways, make our body a living sacrifice. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Hey, being brotherly one toward another, showing charity. You see that? That's the spirit we're supposed to be in, knowing and understanding all these things are coming. Verse 12 goes on to say what? Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. There it is, man. That fervent heat is coming. As judgment and punishment upon the what? The third of men, and also two-thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who refuse to repent. See, like, as soon as I start making the video, I start getting sleepy, man. That ain't nothing, that ain't, that's nothing but Satan. You know what I'm saying? Can scroll fucking social media all day and won't yawn one time. As soon as you start trying to do a video, he want to come with that bullshit, man. But, yeah, we about to finish. about to wrap it up anyway. But, uh, but yeah, man, th this is what's coming. And once again, once again, uh... Yeah, the state of Israel is leading America and the rest of these nations into this World War III, but it's not going to turn out good for America, man. Once this thing pops off in this full-fledged war, you see where all the nations are in the midst of it? Hey, man, America's out of there. You see? And we got all the prophecies to prove it. Fire is coming to this place, man. And once it finishes burning, it will be a complete desolation. As the Most High has promised to make it, you see. Let's get uh, let's wrap it up on this one. This is Malachi four and one. It says, "For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all, and all that, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shav Host, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This entire place is going to be." Burn the fuck up with everything in it, and the Most High is going to make it into what? A desolation. Thus saith the Bible, thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And so with that, I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakak Badash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hope for the letter I came out there. Pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Ababa, Ball.